If you're in the market for a new vehicle today, chances are you've probably noticed quite a few things. Cars have become like rolling computers with their fancy driver assistance tech and their large infotainment systems, and they've also become extremely expensive because of all that fancy tech. So what if you don't want any of that crap? Well, thankfully, if you guys are one of those buyers, there are still a few cars out there that will appeal to you. And today, I'm taking a look at one of the oldest dinosaurs that you can buy. This is the 2019 Nissan Frontier Pro 4X, the oldest new car on the market that you can buy today because Nissan hasn't actually redesigned the truck since 2005. And while there is a new Frontier that's just over the horizon, the big question I want to answer, if you guys are looking to spend the least amount of money possible on a new truck, should you still consider a 2019 Frontier? That's what we're here to find out. So to show you guys the 2019 Frontier, I'm actually in Miami, Florida at the end of August. I know, what was Nissan thinking? So I apologize if I do get a little bit sweaty, but thankfully there is the beautiful beach that's right behind us here uh, in Miami. But let's talk about the truck because this truck as I said, is the oldest new vehicle that you can buy today. And for this program, Nissan is calling it Life at 20, which is the shirt that I'm wearing, to basically remind me the media what it was like to be a new uh, car shopper in your 20s, basically Generation Z, which is currently the youngest generation of car buyers uh, that are out today. Now, the 2019 Frontier, as you guys know, hasn't been fully redesigned since 2005, and Nissan hasn't given it a refresh, honestly, in a decade. 2009 is when they kind of grafted on their V-Motion grille. There's sort of a V-Motion grille here. I actually think the truck still looks pretty good. Even though it does look old, there is still something uniquely handsome about it. Now, unlike most of the competition, you'll, bet you'll get halogen headlights, uh, incandescent turn signals, halogen fog lights. Don't even think to find bi-xenons or LED headlights. And as a result, driving this thing at night is going to be more of a challenging task because the headlights, from what I've read, are extremely dim. Now, this Pro 4X model is kind of the top of the trim. It's got more ground clearance. It's got special off-road shocks. It's got a unique uh, locking rear differential. And it also looks particularly nice, especially in this red color. Now, because the Frontier is so old, this does make it one of these smaller compact trucks that you can buy. It's technically a mid-sized truck, but if you compare it to like a Gladiator, this is significantly smaller. Now, being the Pro 4X model, you get around uh, 10 and a half inches of ground clearance, so about an inch and a half more ground clearance. And you also get these all-terrain tires uh, in hand-cooked tires. They look fantastic, actually. These are a 16-inch wheel. Nissan offers up to an 18-inch wheel if you guys go for the uh, luxury-oriented SL. But I think the Frontier is best viewed in this Pro 4X model. Now, just like other compact trucks, Nissan offers the uh, configurations of the Frontier in two. There's the extended cab, the king cab, or this crew cab. And then you can take a pick between a five-foot bed or a six-foot one or six-foot long bed. Uh, the six-foot bed is available on the crew cab or it's standard on the king cab. You have to go for like an SV trim if you guys want the uh, longer bed. Now, as you can see, the Pro 4X includes this nice little roof rack at the top where you can put like your surfboards or you can put bikes up there. It makes the truck look better. I think the Frontier looks a little bit naked uh, versus the uh, when you don't have the actual roof racks. And then, of course, underneath the truck, because this is the Pro 4X, as I said, you'll get the special shocks and you'll also get skid plagues. So again, this is designed to go off-roading because it's a true truck. It's got a ladder-type frame. It's got a live axle in the back. It's got an independent uh, front suspension. And this truck is still relatively capable uh, by most of the modern competition. Now, at the rear of the Frontier, you can see nothing has really changed. Again, this is the same design that we've seen for years. You have an all incandescent design for the taillights. You do get rear parking sensors and a backup camera. Nissan added a backup camera to the Frontier, I want to say, five years ago when the government made it uh, mandated. But again, if you're looking for the fancier stuff, like 360 cameras, that's not here. Now, look, speaking of the bed, it's not a damped tailgate, of course, uh, which I wasn't expecting, but the bed is still fairly useful. As you can see, this one has the standard bed, so it's the five foot long bed. You do have these nice little tie downs. This one here also has a spray in bed liner, which is nice. And Nissan says that you can still carry a maximum of around 1,065 pounds in the bed, but of course that's gonna vary depending on the configuration. So in case the outside of the truck didn't remind you how old it was, just take a look at the key fob. This literally screams early 2000 Nissan. Don't even expect to find push button start. Instead, you have this key that uh, is refreshingly simple. So as you approach the vehicle, there's no button. Instead, you have to use the lock and unlock buttons on the actual remote. Now, looking at the interior, you can also see that Nissan has not changed 
a thing with this interior. I mean, I, the Pro 4X, I do like the interior a lot. Uh, the base model Frontier looks even more basic, but in a more refreshingly way, or simple way, because these power windows, uh, you have hand crank windows on the base model, and the materials in here, very utilitarian. Surprisingly, I actually like the seats in this truck with the leather, the optional leather. Uh, it is a very soft leather material, but I will say that the leather doesn't look quite as durable. It's already wrinkling uh, on this truck. Now getting inside, the Pro 4X sits up higher than the regular ones, so you have to kind of step in a little bit more. Uh, I wish my tester had running boards. Now, starting the vehicle up, gonna insert the key in. But the engine has that typical VQ sound. Let's turn up the air conditioning because it is hot. And just to prove to you guys that this is a new truck, it has 7,600 miles. So no, this is not a 2005 that I stole from somebody. Now shutting the door. It actually still sounds pretty solid. I was surprised. I mean, there is a little bit of structural shimmy, but for something that's 15 years old, I'm actually pretty pleased. Looking at the rest of this cabin, you can see the infotainment system, super dated. The materials in here, plasticky and utilitarian, but durable. And the entire ambiance of this cabin takes me back to high school because I was in high school when this truck came out. This 5.8 inch touchscreen display does include embedded navigation system, but I mean, this is literally what um, Nissan or Infiniti was putting on cars back in 2007. So actually maybe even before that, really old system very small buttons. Um, the base model truck actually has a larger seven inch screen, uh, which doesn't make sense, which was added for 2019. Uh, no Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. Remember, this is a very old system. When you put the vehicle into reverse, you do have a backup camera, no trajectory, just a simple camera, and then you have parking sensors in the back. So that was really the only thing that they added that was modern in terms of tech. Now, the Pro 4X also includes these um, white face gauges, which again, just look at the graphics of the gauges. Very old. The steering wheel comes off of a second generation Nissan Pathfinder. It is also only a tilt wheel. There's no telescoping function for the wheel. So that's kind of a problem if you guys are a little bit shorter. The door panels here, all hard touch plastic. There's some leatherette. It's a very soft touch plasticky material here on the armrest. The window is only one touch down for the driver's side. It's not even one touch up, which would be nice. Uh, the controls for like the headlights and the wipers. They're all older Nissan switch gear. Uh, you have this very simple dial to turn it into four wheel drive. You have, a, you have a locking rear differential. You have heated seats, just two, or two, two positions for the heated rear seats. And then over here, this controls the five speed automatic transmission. It's all very old. So again, it may not be the most luxurious and some of the plastic feels a little cheap. Um, you also have a traditional pull handbrake here. But there is something uh, uniquely charming about this, this truck. Now over here, the glove box, you can see very small on the lower part, but you do have an upper glove box there to give you a little bit more space. All hard touch plastic materials and some of it doesn't even fit very well. The armrest here, it's rubbery plastic. Um, and when you open it up, you can see there is a little bit of storage. Uh, if you're looking for a USB port, there's one right here. It looks like it was added via aftermarket, but at least Nissan gave us a USB port. Now, thankfully, unlike the Toyota Tacoma, I don't feel like I'm sitting on the floor. The seats actually have a good eight-way power adjustment and they adjust for height. So the driving position in this truck is more agreeable for me, but I will say with the seat all the way back, this is with the seat all the way back, this is like my driving position. So I imagine somebody who's over six feet tall will have a tough time driving this thing and getting comfortable. So just keep that in mind. Now, another downside that this is an older truck is the back seat of this vehicle is considerably smaller than most of the competition. Even this crew cab model is short on legroom compared to a lot of the newer competition. Nissan says you get around 33 inches of legroom, which is far better than the 25 inches of legroom you get with the King cab. Um, the seats, there are still an armrest that folds down here. You have a nearly flat floor. And then there's a couple of things here. I'm seeing there's a cup holder there. I thought this would come out, but no rear seat vents. I could really use that in this hot Florida climate. You do have just one mat pocket here, and then you have hard touch plastic materials everywhere. These seats, they do not recline or do anything kind of special, but you can still kind of pull this seat up. Maybe you can't, maybe not. Oh. If you pull that lever over there, you can still pull the seat up and then you find some storage underneath the seat back, which is nice, um, but some of the competitors offer a little bit more clever storage solutions. Now underneath the hood, this is a truck, so you guys are probably wondering what the capabilities are like. Well, Nissan still offers a choice of two different engines, and they are old but proven engines. Starting at the base truck, you're gonna get a 2.5 liter QR25DE 
engine. That's actually the same engine that's in a Nissan Altima, but beefed up for truck duties. That makes 152 horsepower and 171 pound-feet of torque. Now, most Frontiers will have this motor. It's the four-liter V6. So it's one of the bigger displacement V6 engines in the business. It also is the least powerful, because remember, this is an old engine. It's part of the VQ engine family. It's a VQ40 uh, DE. It makes 261 horsepower and 281 uh, pound-feet of torque. Now, the beauty about the Frontier is unlike all the other Nissan products which use a CVT. This uses a five-speed manual on the base uh, 2.5 base truck. Um, you can also upgrade to a five-speed automatic. That's right, five speeds in this thing. You can buy a new car with five speeds. The six-cylinder is available with either a six-speed manual that's standard or for $1,000 extra. You can upgrade to the five-speed automatic that this truck has. Um, now, Frontiers, all of them will tow, uh, or Frontiers will tow a maximum of around 6,600 pounds, so a little bit less than the competition. And the truck weighs between 3,700 pounds for the base two-wheel drive four-cylinder work truck to about 4,600 pounds for this one. So it does make it a little bit lighter than the competition, but not that much lighter. Now, fuel economy is also an area where the Frontier is showing its age. Uh, this truck, uh, this configuration is rated at 15 in the city, 21 on the highway, ouch. There are bigger half-ton trucks that get better gas mileage than this. The four-cylinder with a manual, which I'm actually gonna show you guys later today, uh, gets up to 19 in the city and 25 on the highway. Keep in mind, that's for a two-wheel drive version. But uh, we're gonna spend some time driving this one and also that four, that four cylinder with a stick. So let's get this out on the road and see how it performs. So it's been probably five years since I drove this generation of Frontier. I did a video on an Xterra back in 2014. So maybe five or six years, something like that. I have to say driving this truck, it's super familiar. It actually feels relatively pleasant to drive because the steering is super heavy. It's hydraulic. The truck itself just feels very heavy. Um, but you do notice that the ride quality of the truck is a little bit more bouncy than some other uh, newer com competition. Uh, I imagine if maybe you put some stuff in the bed, it'd be a little bit better. But basically, heavy steering because it's hydraulic. Visibility in here is actually good. The truck feels nice and small, which I really like. In terms of the acceleration, this one here has the 4-liter V6. I'm going to switch it over to the 4-cylinder with a manual. And it basically just reminds me of all the other VQ Nissan engines. It uh, has plenty of torque for sure. Plenty of torque down low, which means that the truck feels fast when you first, first put your foot down. Uh, unfortunately, like the other VQ engines, it also gets very coarse and grainy at the higher RPMs. You don't wanna push this engine past five grand because it sounds like you're hurting the engine. But for a transmission that only has half the gears of the new 2019 Ranger that I drove, it is refreshingly responsive. I will give it that. Now, obviously, uh, with so few gears to choose, it's going to knock the engine out of its power band constantly, which is why it's gonna be revving a lot, which is why the gas mileage sucks. But it's really nice and quick to downshift when my foot goes to the floor, which is good. It makes the truck feel faster. Uh, you should be getting 60 in around seven and a half seconds, which is actually pretty competitive with most of the segment. Now, as I said earlier, because the platform is so old, don't expect to find any driver assistance. There's no blind spot monitoring, no forward emergency braking, no lane keep assist, which some for some of you, that may be exactly what you're looking for. But just keep in mind, a lot of the competition is offering that for a price premium. Now, in terms of just driving the truck normally, on this you know residential road that I'm on, keep in mind I'm in Florida, there are no good driving roads. So I'll have to redo this you know test later in DC when I actually find some better roads where it's not congestion, it's not over 100 degrees. Uh, the seats are actually very comfortable for me. I like how soft they are and they are very supportive. Um, it's a very slow truck style steering wheel, which or steering, which is what you expect because this is the Pro 4X model. So I'll be getting into the four cylinder later and we're gonna compare and contrast, but this actually feels faster than the last Tacoma that I drove. It doesn't make any sense to me but keep in mind that the Tacoma has a smaller V6. It's got you know, more gears to choose from and the transmission just isn't as responsive. So I can see why the Frontier still has a good amount of appeal. My only concern is what is Nissan gonna do to this thing when they finally redesign it? Are they going to put the seven speed auto that's in the Armada in this thing? Because if they do, I don't particularly love that transmission. I don't see them putting a CVT in this truck because it's a truck, it's gotta have a stepped automatic. I mean, just look at the market. There's no such thing as a CVT equipped truck. But uh, I would like to see what they do with the engines. Obviously, they need to improve the gas mileage. But, I mean, I think there's still plenty of charm with this vehicle. Uh, but let's hop into the four-cylinder with a stick because 
Nissan has that available for us to drive. Because uh, I'm curious, I want to know what the, a $20,000 truck feels like to drive. So now I've jumped into the Frontier base model with the 2.5 liter engine and a five speed. That's right, I said a five speed manual transmission. <laughs> and you know what? This truck is $19,000. $19,90 plus destination, you're at $20,000. I have to say, there is something very charming about this truck. It feels very nostalgic, which is nice. The whole truck in general, it's a 2019 that was last designed in 2005, and it honestly feels like I'm driving a car that's in 1998, not in 2019 or a 2005. Now remember, this thing is rear wheel drive, um, so you can get the back end to step out, especially if you've got nothing in the back, especially when it's also wet and rainy. This is Miami, the weather is very unpredictable. I have to admit though, this is really charming to drive. The, the truck obviously is not fast, this thing feels sluggish, but the fact that it's got a five-speed manual, it vibrates a lot You know, when you're going through the gears, it just feels very heavy, it feels very dated and old school. This car takes me back to my youth. I mean, I remember trucks like this when I was in middle school, <laughs> and it talks about how old I am, but I mean, this thing is really cool. The fact that you can buy a brand new truck that's this ex least ex that's this inexpensive, have it drive the way it does like this, it's not a horrible driving truck. I mean, really, the only thing that this car really is lacking is in the tech department. I mean, this one here that I'm showing you, has, or that I'm driving, has a bigger seven inch screen, which confuses the heck out of me. Uh, the one thing I didn't realize, this model, this steering wheel doesn't even tilt. I hope you like this position because you can't even move it up or down, let alone in and out. So they took away the, teles the tilt wheel, which you get on the Pro 4X that I showed you guys. But the engine actually is not bad. It's paired up with a five-speed shifter that is very truck-like. Uh, it's very long, rubbery throws. The clutch engages kind of right at the end of the travel, which makes this thing a little bit easier to stall. But it's such a cool little truck, and it's also very small. If you're looking for an actual small truck, this is the one to get because it's actually small. Like, it doesn't feel like you're piloting this huge beast like you would in like the Jeep Gladiator. And really, it doesn't get much better than this. If you're looking for an extremely inexpensive work truck that has no frills, it's very simple, that you can get for a steal, the Frontier is a really, really enticing option. So it makes me wonder, what is Nissan gonna do to this thing when they finally redesign it? Welcome to Miami, where it always constantly rains and there's a crap ton of traffic. Ugh, I hate driving around this city. So one thing about the Frontier that I'm noticing, a lot of the competition feels like they're trying to make the truck feel more like a car. This thing constantly reminds you that it's a truck from the ride quality to the way the engine sounds, to the noise, to the steering feel. So if you're looking for something that actually feels like a truck, this one has your name all over it. So as you can see, it would be pretty easy for me to discredit the Frontier for being super old. You shouldn't buy it. It's just a really big waste of money if you guys wanted to buy a new truck, because this truck literally feels like a 2005. It's a 15 year old vehicle. And honestly, that's what makes the Frontier super charming is the fact that it is that old because it's really simple. It's got a very proven powertrain, proven transmission. And really the only thing you're missing out on is the tech features because that 5.8 inch screen is horrible. It's actually a smaller screen, as I said, compared to the base car. There's no safety systems in this truck. I would like to see something like blind spot monitoring or cross traffic alert. That's something that a lot of buyers really like. And because it's an older truck, you're also gonna be dealing with a thirstier vehicle. The ride quality is not as good. Good. But if that's really not important to you, there's a lot to still like about this Frontier. And really the beauty about this truck is the price. Because remember, I'm here on an event called Life at 20. It's referring to what it was like to be in your 20s, but it's also referring to vehicles that start at under $20,000 because they are few and far between if you're looking for a new vehicle. And that's the beauty about the Frontier. It starts at $19,090 for that base work truck that I showed you. That's 
about $4,000 cheaper than something like, like a Toyota Tacoma and a couple grand cheaper than the Chevrolet Colorado work truck. Now this one here is obviously a lot more money. The Pro 4X is, is gonna cost you around $10,000 more. This one here with options like the premium package, which the leather seats were nice, although they are super old, stickers for around $36,000, $37,000, which is a ridiculous amount of money. I would not pay this much for this truck, but consider the fact that a Tacoma is around $40,000 for a loaded limited. A Jeep Gladiator can touch $60,000, and you're looking at a truck that is a huge value, and keep in mind, because this is so old, Nissan dealers are willing to discount this considerably, so I would check your local Nissan dealer to see how much of a discount, but I've heard that you can take about $7,000 off the price, so this truck here at 37, I would easily pay like 28 for a brand new truck. Even though it's old, there is something uniquely charming about it. Now, because I'm on this short program, I'm not gonna be able to do a full RPM rating, which whenever Nissan decides to give me this truck and it's not 120 freaking degrees out here, I will happily do another video to talk about the RPM rating. But with all that said, I hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on the 2019 Nissan Frontier. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews, like us on Facebook, and as always guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel. For all the latest reviews, thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.